we're going to get most of the images of real life that we're going to consider perspective with from the beautiful Scottish city of Edinburgh. And here's part of a building inside Edinburgh Castle. The important thing to remember is that perspective is a way of describing how something looks when we view it from a particular location. And because it's to do with how it looks when we view it, the level of our eyes is the most important thing. It's the key factor we need to think about. It's easy to think that vanishing points are the important thing, and they usually get the most emphasis in these little conceptual perspective videos. And that tends to give the impression that they're the most important thing. But the most important thing with how something looks is where our eyes are. But what we can use these for is to see that where our eyes end up being, the eye level, is where two horizontal lines on the same plane will end up meeting if we continue them along. So let's put that into practice here. We've got this horizontal line at the bottom of this decorative panel, and then we have another one. So eye level is going to be down here. We can get a better sense of that by putting a line across the bottom at that point. So eye level is approximately here. And the important thing to remember when we're observing and when we're drawing is that actually on eye level, if there should be a straight line, let's say this line up here was actually at eye level, if we were standing on a cherry picker, say, then it would look horizontal. And so while we don't have a straight line in the architecture, we can see what happens is the lines, the horizontal lines above eye level start to tilt in this direction and below eye level, they start to tilt in the other direction and we get this fan shaped pattern and all the horizontal lines are going to meet in the same place if they're aligned with this plane. If we look at this stonework here, we can see that while these aren't exact straight lines, we can see that down here, we have an approximate straight line of this rough coursework here. And it's important to disregard where people's actual eyes are in our scene. It's not to do with where the eyes are of the people in the scene, it's to do with the eyes of the person viewing the scene, or more often, the level of the camera. And here we have another scene from the city of Embra. Now, with this side of the street, there are plenty of horizontal lines that we can use to work out where eye level will be. And this gives eye level as here. And if we look here, that pretty much looks right because we can see that above this, the lines are coming down slightly and below it, they're going up slightly, which is what happens at eye level. There isn't really an actual horizontal line here, but we can see that above and below this point, the lines that we can see change direction. And on each side, we have the fan shape pattern. And when we go to draw, we need to ensure that our horizontal lines increase in angle as they go upwards and increase in angle the other direction when they go further away from eye level. Now we have some other lines here as well. We have, we have this fence and we can see on the other side of the road that this line also goes through the same vanishing point. But we have a building over here. And if we're to look at the lines of this building, we can see that while the horizontal lines on this building do still meet on eye level, I just can't quite get the cardboard to sit flat, it's certainly not the same vanishing point. It's right over here on the edge. This is something not usually mentioned in perspective videos. And that's because this building here is not in a straight line with these buildings. The street is curving slightly and these buildings here are at an angle to these buildings here. And so if I would draw this accurately, the thing I need to remember is that these horizontal lines meet on the same eye level, but not the same vanishing point as these ones. 
And the more this building swings towards us, the further away the vanishing point is going to be, usually well off the paper. The other thing to remember is when we have situations that look like this, and we can look at this line here, and it also is not going to go to the same vanishing point, even though it lines up parallel to these buildings here. And that's because this ground is sloping down. And another thing they don't usually tell you in these little diagrams is that this only works as neatly as this when the ground is flat and all the structures that we're looking at sit on that same flat ground level. When the ground slopes up or down, while these rules generally still apply, they don't apply to the lines that represent ground level. And the easiest thing to do in that case is to observe carefully where the lines are in relation to the lines where we can use the perspective angles and then draw them that way. Our third example is back inside Edinburgh Castle. Well, how on earth do we work out eye level here? Because there really don't seem to be many horizontal lines at all. And sometimes the easiest thing is just to observe carefully what's in front of us and to draw it. But it is, I think, much more helpful if we can understand exactly what's happening here. Now, we don't have any exact horizontal lines, but as in the first example, we do have some approximate rows of stonework. And while any one stone is not necessarily lining up with the one next to it, generally these are in horizontal lines. So the question is, where do we get a horizontal line? And it's not going to be just here, but it's going to be here and here as well, because eye level is always the same for every object that's in our scene. Where do we find a horizontal line? And if we're looking at the lines, these ones are a bit straighter because these stones are a bit more dressed than these ones. So where do we have a horizontal line? So these lines are sloping at this angle, becoming more and more sloping. So as we take them up, they're becoming straighter. And this is where we seem to have the straightest row, just here. And if we look, let's move this down, we can see that that's actually a pretty straight row of stones as well. Now, what happens above eye level when we have a rounded surface is that the curves get rounder and rounder and rounder the further away from eye level they go. And in the opposite direction, it's the same, but in the opposite angle. As they go down from eye level, they get rounder and rounder and rounder. Now they stop here because this curve doesn't continue. It becomes a straight wall here. So when I'm drawing this, I know that here I have a straight line approximately of stonework. And then as I go above, I need to create an ever increasing curvature. And I do that in effect by keeping these stones in the front larger and reducing the size of the stones as they move further away with foreshortening. And that in effect compresses all the rows this way as each stone becomes shorter and shorter. Another thing that helps to show us that this is in fact the eye level is the stairs here. Because what happens is when we look at a flight of stairs, at eye level we look straight on to the steps. We see straight on to the edge and so we see the entire rise, the vertical section. But as the stairs go below eye level, we start to see the treads more and more. We start to see the horizontal piece that we step on. And as we go above eye level, these rises, the vertical part of the step that we see, we see slightly less and less of them as they get higher and higher and the angle starts to hide the lower part from view. So when I draw, it's really important and very helpful to find eye level 
I can't use the eye level of the people. It's the eye level of the camera if it's a photo that we're looking at. And I was standing on a much higher section of the castle than these people were at. And that then tells me that this is the straight line and I can see it right the way along these horizontal, approximately horizontal bands of stonework. Now, eye level is not just the key to understanding perspective in a given situation when we're outside. It's the same when we're inside. Here, we have some nice parallel lines in the ceiling timbers. And so if we want to find where eye level is, it's about here. And what we see is that sometimes eye level is approximately eye level. Because when I take this photo, I'm actually standing on the same level ground as the people who are in this scene. And what we find in a scene such as this is that all the architectural elements that line up horizontally also line up on the same eye level. So the tops of these windows also line up with the same vanishing point. And these windows on the other side of the room also line up with the same vanishing point. Once I've located where eye level is going to be, then for all the horizontal surfaces th that align in a straight line will converge on eye level. I can get a sense that these lines are also going to converge on the same eye level, but just a long way off to the side. And we can see these principles in action in both inside and outside combined situations. And for this, we're going to go to Berlin. Here we have the front colonnade of the memorial to the victims of fascism. And if we line up architectural elements, such as this row of columns, and we take another angle, this time above, just as in a room, we can go below and above and we'll use the tops of the pads that the columns sit on. Here we get eye level. And if we put this line across at that point, we can see what we would expect. And that's that it actually is the eye level of most of the people in this scene because I'm taking this photo standing on the same level ground. The thing I want you to notice is if we look across outside at this building, which I think was once called the Crown Prince's Palace. And if we line up one of the horizontal lines there, we can see that it also goes through the same vanishing point. And if we get this straight line, this street level front line where the building touches the ground, it also lines up at the same point. So it doesn't matter if we're inside a building or catching glimpses from outside a building, every object in the same scene will always have the same eye level for all of its vanishing points. This is, in effect, a one-point vanishing point scene. For our last scene, we're back in Edinburgh and we're looking at what I believe was originally intended as a memorial to the war dead in the Great War that was going to be based on the proportions of the Parthenon. And now if we take these lines, we get eye level. And in fact, we might need a longer line. And eye level is just off the page there. And we're looking at approximately here. And clearly eye level is nowhere near the eye level of anyone in this scene. In fact, it's way above everything else we can see. And the reason for that is because my eye level or the eye level of the camera was in a tower that was built on a bit of a hill that was also considerably higher than this structure as well. Eye level can actually be above everything in our scene when we're looking down. So let me just show you what that means with a smaller version of this. So let's get these lines more precisely. So approximately 
there is our eye level. Now, let me just do something with this picture. So by getting the eye level in the other direction, it helps me get a more accurate line. And of course, what I want to show is that if we take a structure that's below eye level and we make it tall enough, when we get to eye level, which is this line here, we do in fact get a horizontal line. Eye level is there, it does give us a horizontal line, but there has to be an architectural object with a straight line in it for us to be able to see it. Now, when we draw from a reference, or particularly when we draw from life, we don't have a chance to put vanishing points in. And if we could, they often are simply not going to fit on our page. But if I understand the principles involved, then I can look at my scene and I can understand where eye level is going to be. I can look to see where my lines that do go to the same vanishing points are, in this case, these ones and these ones. And when I draw them, I can at least have a notional sense that these two lines are coming in closer together, that these two lines are coming closer together. And if there were other structures that were aligned parallel or at right angles to this, then they also would have their horizontal lines going towards the same vanishing points. If they were angled at different angles, to this structure, then they would have different vanishing points, but they would still all be on the same eye level above what we're seeing here. Eye level is the great unsung hero of understanding perspective, because how something looks depends where we're standing looking at it from. It depends on the level of our eyes. There is only one eye level for every object in a given scene. If we could line up all of the lines on these little houses going towards the horizon here, they would all line up on the same eye level. And of course, if we're drawing from a photo reference or from location from life, then we don't need to understand perspective at all. We can simply draw what we see. But if we understand the principles of perspective, it helps us see more accurately, more easily, what is in front of us. And that always gives us, I believe, more chance of drawing more accurately. Look, I hope this has been helpful in getting a sense of perspective and how it actually applies in life. When we're not looking at little simplistic diagrams that really have been designed for architects to showcase architectural designs without any great regard often for what's around it. While real life situations can be somewhat more complex, the fundamental principles can be still applied to every scene that we see. But finding eye level before we do anything else is always going to be the key to what's happening with perspective. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. I hope this will be helpful in the next drawing you do. But look, whatever you draw, however you draw it, whether it has perspective or not, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.